Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stock Stories. St. Lucia's tourism industry shows strong signs of rebound. Agricultural extension officers receive training on hoop greenhouses. And the Government of Canada provides support for COVID-19 vaccination in the Caribbean. The Ministry of Tourism has been working alongside stakeholders in preparing the national tourism product for business as vaccination against COVID-19 ramps up in key source markets. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede says while some 7,000 industry employees have returned to work since COVID-19 hit, there are thousands more waiting to return. Based on developments in the marketplace, Minister Fede says there is every reason to believe that St. Lucia's sector is well on its way to rebounding. Hermady Mark reports. St. Lucia is gearing up for an exciting summer, signaled by the Whitsuntide weekend, an unofficial start to the summer for St. Lucia, with the British Courier UTI's return to the destination. The weekend also brought more optimism that St. Lucia's tourism sector will continue along a steady trajectory. With the official reopening of several accommodation providers, including Body Holiday St. Lucia, East Winds and Royalton Resorts and the welcoming of some 2,300 visitors to the destination. Increased airlift during the summer from St. Lucia's main source markets has increased occupancy levels for several accommodation providers, which is vital for the continued revival of the tourism sector. Jerrine Georges is the St. Lucia Tourism Authority's public relations manager. Several accommodation providers are reporting increased levels of occupancy during the summer and internationally there are added gateways to St. Lucia that will open up as of the 5th of June. And so we will see the introduction of an inaugural service from Dallas and the return of American Airlines service from New York after more than a decade. Also on July 1st, we will welcome JetBlue from New Jersey and so um, these are all part of the excitement that we're building up for the summer. And um, thereafter, we expect international markets, including Canada, to open up in the weeks ahead. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fady stated that he is happy that the tourism sector is on a rebound, which can only go well for more jobs, business linkages, and more revenue. He expressed optimism about the start of what is projecting to be an exciting summer which means that hundreds more of tourism employees will likely return to work, noting that several taxi drivers, tour guides, vendors, and others have been disadvantaged amid the pandemic. The SLTA has reaffirmed its commitment to ensuring the successful rebound of the tourism sector and the return of the industry workers to gainful employment. Um, we are very happy to see that tourism is pretty much on the rebound and um, this augurs well for more jobs, our business linkages and more revenue. We are also optimistic um, that the summer is projecting to be very exciting and that means a lot more of the tourism employees can return to work. We know that several have been disadvantaged amid the pandemic and together we want to ensure that we can restore um, St. Lucia's tourism product. And so the SLT continues with its marketing efforts in terms of um, ensuring that St. Lucia is highlighted and really done so strategically within its, its source markets. And um, we just hosted our global virtual roadshow. And right now we're focusing on the virtual North American roadshow, really um, engaging with our targeted audience. Um, we also just participated in a recent CHD Caribbean Travel Marketplace 39, and we're looking forward to reaping the benefits for the destination from these, these engagements. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority continues to place special focus on key areas within major source markets of the USA, UK, Canada, the Caribbean, and Asia in reaping fruitful benefits for the destination. From the Government Information Service, Hilma Dimark reporting. Meanwhile, Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney says the impact of the United Kingdom's categorising of St. Lucia as a holiday destination for the British is still left to be felt. To replace its blanket ban on foreign leisure trips, the UK government decided to sort countries into three categories, 
green, amber, or red, depending on a range of factors including the proportion of the country's population that has been vaccinated, rates of infection, and emerging variants. St. Lucia is among many Caribbean islands as well as the United States on the United Kingdom's amber list for travel. Prime Minister Chastney says the full implication of the restriction has not yet been determined. None of the countries in the Caribbean were able to make it onto the green list. Um, and even the United States was put into amber. I'm waiting to see over the next couple of weeks how that works out. Um, British Airways did reduce the number of flights from four to two. Um, I've been speaking to many of the hoteliers. They have not seen significant cancellations as yet, but they're also not receiving a lot of new bookings. Um, so I think everybody's waiting to see how the system works and whether in fact the British citizens gain confidence in going into an amber destination. People arriving from amber list countries are required to quarantine for 10 days at home on their return, whereas people arriving from green list countries are not required to quarantine, but they must book and pay for a mandatory PCR test on or before day two of their return. The most restrictive protocol is for people arriving from red list countries. They are required to quarantine for a full 10 days on arrival in the UK at a designated UK port in a government-managed facility at their own cost, starting from £1,750 per person. Honourable Chastney says the concern lies in the insurability of travellers to amber and red destinations. If a person goes to a green light, the insurance companies seem to have said, yes, we will cover you. Um, if you go to an amber, it's still questionable as to whether the insurance companies are going to cover you or not. And certainly if you go to a red, my understanding is the insurance companies will not cover you. Prime Minister Chastney, however, noted that consumers will ultimately make their decision on whether to travel to red or amber list destinations. When the United Kingdom earlier in the year tried to restrict people from traveling from zones in the UK, we did not see any change. Um, the United States, even though all, almost all the Caribbean islands are in category four of the CDC, mm -hmm. I mean, American Airlines' load factor to St. Lucia for the month of May was 93%. I mean, when I traveled up on the flight, there was one empty seat. When I came back on the flight, there was no empty seats. Um, and we continue to see that, strength, that trend grow um, from day to day. So the consumers ultimately are going to make the decision. And we have to wait a little bit to see how the consumers react to these new protocols that the UK government has put in. And I, I think that that's how I, I envision it. That there's a protocol for green, a protocol for amber, and a protocol for red. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see how the public reacts to it now. We'll know better in a couple of weeks. Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney. A new collaboration between the Government of Canada and the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, is being launched to improve the health and protection of populations in situations of high vulnerability due to COVID-19. To meet this target, Canada is contributing Canadian $50 million in support of PAHO's critical work in the Caribbean and Latin America towards readiness and access to COVID-19 vaccines for at-risk women, migrants, refugees, transient persons, indigenous and vulnerable populations in areas where health conditions are typically precarious. Dr. Carissa Etienne, director of PAHO, says the collaboration was born with the common vision that COVID-19 vaccines should not be a privilege but a right for every person, regardless of their ethnicity, economic condition, gender, migratory status, or whether they reside in a city or rural area. The Department of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission, have concluded a training seminar on hoop greenhouses for agricultural extension officers. We get the details in this report. The Department of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission under the Seven Crops Project, have organized several initiatives all geared towards reducing St. Lucia's food import bill. The most recent initiative being a training session for agriculture extension officers on a newly introduced agricultural technology, hoop greenhouses.
project coordinator of the Seven Crops project, Adley Nudovic, noted that the newly introduced technology will be of great benefit to St. Lucian farmers. We did one year of trials with the hoop greenhouses, that's what we're talking about, that's what we're seeing here today. And um, we observed that um, it was very encouraging. The quality and the quantity of the fruit was way better under the hoop greenhouses throughout. So we tried it in all the regions throughout the island in several different microclimates and out of that we realized that we did have some issues. Like anything, it's a new technology to our environment. So that is what we call adoption. So we adopted the technology wholesale as it was in Taiwan. And um, after that first year of trial we realized that we have to tweak it a bit. So today we have, um, we come in here today and we are here to show the extension officers the necessary adjustment that we, we have seen fit. Production specialist of the Taiwan Technical Mission, Eric Chen, explained that the changes made will boost productivity of the hoop greenhouses as they are tailored to the climate of St. Lucia. According to the research last year, since we had a whole year round trial last year, uh, from the dry season to the rainy season, we found that uh, the, the growth rate, in terms of the growth rate and the pest control and uh, the sweeteners and the uh, the quality of the fruits is exceeded in the open field. So we import this technology to let the farmers uh, easily produce the fruits, especially cantaloupe, in the rainy season. Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Shen, expressed his satisfaction with the progress of the Seven Crops project. Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, I came today and see uh, so many extension officers uh, come to learn uh, how to uh, adjust uh, the technology we import uh, before. Uh, it's a hoop uh, greenhouse and I think uh, what we will try to do is to cooperate with uh, agricultural ministry to promote food and uh, nutrition security uh, in St. Lucia and this technology will help a lot uh, for St. Lucia especially when it comes to climate change. Uh, this uh, hoop greenhouse will also become a uh, very good uh, measure to enhance the resilience of the uh, climate change. A cohort of individuals will be trained in the installation of the hoop greenhouses. The prices of the hoop greenhouses are expected to start at $350. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Some 300 Caribbean health professionals and over 40 regional organizations have publicly voiced support for front-of-package warning labels to help consumers across the region protect their health. The health professionals and organizations are signatories to a month-long campaign spearheaded by the Healthy Caribbean Coalition. Voting is currently underway across the region on the adoption of the final draft CARICOM regional standard which contains specifications for package warning labels to be placed on food products high in sugars, sodium and fats according to thresholds outlined by the PAHO Nutrient Profile Model. The St. Lucia Cancer Society is among regional organizations supporting the package warning labels. President Dr. Tamara Remy says these nutrients are of great public health concern as excess consumption is linked to obesity and non-communicable diseases, which are a significant burden to the people and economy of the Caribbean. NCDs such as diabetes, cancer and hypertension are the leading causes of mortality, morbidity and disability in the Caribbean region, representing 78% of all deaths and 76% of all premature deaths. Additionally, rates of overweight and obesity in the region are among the highest in the world and most worrying among children where one out of every three Caribbean children is overweight or obese. To support this campaign, go to www.healthycaribbean.org. Voting on the standard ends on May 31, 2021. The CARICOM Secretariat has launched a remote learning initiative on regional integration and the CSME. Here's to San King English Francis with more. High school students from Belize and Guyana have participated in the first leg of a merged online class on regional integration and the CARICOM single market and economy. Sessions held recently saw teachers from Guyana teaching students from the Ladyville Technical High School and the Sacred Heart College in Belize, and teachers from Belize teaching students from Queen's College in Guyana. 
Speaking during the virtual launch of the initiative on May 10th, Dr. Laura Bristol, Program Manager for Human Resource Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, said that the objective of the initiative is to enhance the implementation of the CARICOM single market and economy by making the youth a key stakeholder more aware of the region and its possibilities. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution use organic and join excessive agrochemical use additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment join the good food revolution grow buy and consume organic a message from rice st lucia and the ministry of sustainable development with funding from the gef small grants program undp the good food revolution Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of We All. Monsieur, Madame, Department, qui est une responsabilité pour information en gouvernement CELSI, ça c'est GIS, en ce moment, télévision nationale PIA NTN, car pour cette nouvelle en créole, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement CELSI, j'ai fait possible pour faciliter les finances qui ont prêté l'argent pour assister ce type de business, c'est le ci qui a souffert à la peste maladie corona. Banque développement, c'est le ci SLDB, j'ai commencé à faire l'argent available pour le secteur de business pour aider à lutter à la peste maladie corona. Si pour assister à cela, c'est l'initiative du gouvernement, c'est le ci pour offrir support à un programme de résilience de support économique. Le gouvernement a établi le programme ça là en juillet l'année 2020 avec un arrangement spécial pour faire possible pour tout business, pour tout business trouver ce support finance avec une spéciale facilité qui est responsable principalement pour assister tout business et l'autre business qui a marché qui pas toujours en cette ci Ça, c'est particulièrement ce qui est affecté par le corona et aussi le changement de climat. L'année 2,6 millions de dollars américains qui avaient là toujours un bas programme ça là pour un des secteurs privés et pour continuer et supporter les pharmaces, ça c'est les cultivateurs, chez business et la famille en caille pour un des bâtis résilience contre le changement de climat. En parmi ces cultivateurs que j'ai trouvé bénéfice pour programme ça là, c'est Kigan Meyers, Rod Babono. Selon Meyers, il souffert un bas changement de climat à ce 4.5 hectares. Il dit ça c'était un problème qui était difficile en pile. Mais il cherchait une manière pour faire bataille contre le problème climat. Et que malgré il souffert et puis mauvais pèse quand même là, à l'année 2020, côté il perd tout dans oui avec l'argent aussi. Banque développement, c'est ici, SLDB, a tué à la peine, et malgré l'assistance là pour un titan pour y venir en réalité. Banque là, un dé a donné une grande façon pour vivre et mettre agricole li en mouvement encore. En l'autre business, ça c'est Bamboo Springs qui a produit de l'eau sous naturelle, en bas conduite de mettre les Martin Wicks, qui est tombé en faillite à en cause des situations industrielles touristiques là, avec manière Covid est décambrée, il porte pour faire des sans pas plus bas que 60 Mais elle est le début encore encore, pas perdre la cap pour un support en bas programme assistance financière là, que le gouvernement a jamais été en place pour aider au vivre à sous pied. Le programme là, tu aussi offert un support technical et bon guide pour ces business là vivre en opération facilement. Le gouvernement, c'est le qui a continué pour tenir le commitment pour improuver à sous la vie tout ce qui est Par conséquent, le gouvernement a fait assurer tout ce qui est trouver l'occasion pour nous en mettre sur le terrain, qui ça eux même pour raison ça là, là j'ai plusieurs projets pour développement avec Bati Kai, au Liban, c'est ici, avec dernier qui commence ce projet de développement Kai à Talvon, à Babono. Les officiers, Corporation nationale, 
pour construction CAI, ça c'est NHC. J'ai déclaré que le projet de développement CAI à Talvon a aidé à régler la situation pour les gens qui ont bâti CAI dans les lot et qui ont aussi aussi pour l'occasion pour plus gens comme nous, ni terrain et CAI eux-mêmes. La première phase du projet est 49 terrains et la deuxième phase est 39 terrains et la deuxième pour marcher le commencement du travail. Timothy Mangal, qui est le GoGrek NHC, dit aussi que la troisième phase est 130 terrains. Il dit aussi que la troisième phase est 2 propriétaires pour affaires commerciales et le Kayo Community Center. Mangal a ajouté que le développement de Kayo en Talvon, car il y a un système de réservoir pour de l'eau, ça c'est pour de l'eau même, pour tous les résidents servis. Représentatif pour la compagnie Fresh Start Construction Company Limited, ça c'est Peter Félicien, explique que la compagnie a eu l'occasion pour nous faire des terrains pour bâtir des mais c'est la compagnie qui a fait toute l'autre nécessité, qu'on produit des plans, chercher pour tout épouvement aussi bâti tout ce qu'il y a même et c'est l'autre nécessité qui est c'est après vous trouver vente pour ce qu'il y a là vous pouvez jouer un pays alors vous n'y avez pas qu'il y a une agence qui a un développement cette ici qui a un à gymnage et puis vous avez un projet ça là mais c'est là qu'il y a une responsabilité pour l'agricole et la pêche coopératif et ressources naturelles et le gouvernement cette ici qui aussi c'est vous pour cette pour Babono c'est le honorable Ezekiel Joseph expliquer que pour les gens qui ont été aussi, pour les gens qui ont été aussi, et qui n'ont pas obligé d'aller au petit banque de développement. Ils ont été allés direct pour NHC, et qui ont été aussi, 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 pour un total de 35 000 dollars. Selon le représentatif Ezekiel Joseph, ça veut dire qu'ils ont été loués, et qu'ils ont été aussi, et qu'ils ont été aussi, et la caille, et sa caille bout de 6 en 5 pour 6 mois, et la sa bout en 5 pour 6 mois, et ne si caille sa ba ou tit pour moi sa pour péter sa la. Mais sou si mye, ministre l'a expliqué, yon sa ale ou ti misi Boland en SLDB pour yon loun, et kou caille sa trouve pour péter pour 6 dollars par pied kawe. On y wap Joseph déclare ki, et ka continue pour chen négociation pour yon en ki façon yon pe ou edui a soupeyman sa la toujou. J'ai eu le directeur SLDB, Vincent Boland, a annoncé qu'il a essayé de travailler de la même façon. Et puis le gouvernement s'est ici pour établir un dégoût de développement au Liban s'est ici pour bénéficier de tout le pays qui n'a besoin d'un morceau de propriété pour même quand ça qui a existé à Talvon. Finissement, c'est même la bonne côte où le commencement de la saison de visitation touriste pour le Karim là, en s'est ici. Avion l'Angleterre, ça c'est TUI, retourné à destination nous pour marcher officiellement opération Plaisir Hotel à Péa, qu'on Body Holiday, St. Lucia, East Winds et Royalton Resorts. Finalement, la semaine de la Pancote, là, ouais, qui plus que 2300 étrangers à tuer à Péa, et ça a aussi espoir secteur touristique, c'est ici. C'est ici qui a commencé à ouvrir pour touristes à ce pays international là, visiter. Commencé le 25 en mois de juin 2021. Avion American Airlines, Rod Dallas, Aéroport International Fort Worth, Fort Worth, et aussi pour viewer introduction service avion Rod JFK à New York après plus que 10 ans. JetBlue aussi, si vous avez vu, commencer le service le 1er en mois de juillet 2021 avec l'autre la place internationale que au Canada pour commencer dans ces semaines après ça. Le ministre des Affaires touristiques du gouvernement cette ici, Honorable Dominique Fede, déclare que c'est une grande géoté pour que plusieurs grandes destinations internationales j'a choisi pour visiter cette ici et ça veut dire plus de travail, plus de business. Le ministre Fede dit aussi que ça a une cause plus de travail dans le secteur touristique pour vivre à travail quand le chauffeur taxi, tour guide, river days à parmi les autres. Le ministre touristique là déclare que Publicité à sa destination, cette ci j'ai touché six grands pays à la terre. À parmi eux, c'est l'Afrique et ses pays nation Chine, avec les nations chinoises. Il dit aussi, cette ci à parmi 28 pays qui participent récemment à plus grand spectacle des affaires touristiques caribéennes. 
exercise ko tenu of tobo novella maka mi se ota poka gadi maka boyo invitation ko chele pimo ko si die ko se vela vi de me pose to lot novel a koyol après ça maka vi e pose to chele mesia pil primus and that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville. <laughs>